What's going on, y'all? We back with another video. Today's video is going to be about El Chino. I just realized a lot of the cartel members' names start with L, something. That's how you know they on a bullshit out there. Like, that's how you know. But I guess this one is the Sinaloa lower cartels high ranking hitman. And I ain't going to front. I said it before in the previous videos. Y'all motherfuckers are tough. I ain't even going to lie. Like, no bullshit. Y'all tough. When I mean tough, I'm not talking about, like, exaggerating tough. I'm talking about, like, out there, they are on the bullshit. Like, they will smoke you. Do not play. Like, niggas out here, they be making, trying to talk shit in the U.S. about Mexicans and all this other shit. Bro, dumb niggas will kill you. In a country, they are smoking shit. Left and right, everybody's getting killed. Not to say that's like something good, but you got to do what you got to do. I don't know. I respect it. Like, fuck it. The motherfuckers is doing weird shit, playing with the mula. You die. And I ain't even going to front. So I just been seeing a lot of videos pop up on my, um, on my YouTube. And I'm like, well, shit. Shit, it don't hurt just to learn about what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So. Let's do another one. This one is going to be on El Chino. We did one on El Chapo, El Mencho, El Chapitos. <laughs> Don't fuck with anybody in the name that start with E-L. If you ain't learned, then you're going to learn now. These, these motherfuckers will pack you. Right, let's get right into it. Like, comment, set down, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let's have a conversation. All you other weirdos that's in the comments talking some other bullshit. Nobody, like, y'all weird. Like, nobody's going to sit here arguing with nobody over the internet. That's weird. Do that weird shit on your own time. I'm cool with that. Like, come on, bro. Y'all weird. Y'all sitting behind y'all desk talking shit. We're never going to see you. But anyways, we're writing it. And let's start this bitch. But 2013, this happened. see it? Him, the clown. In the next few seconds, this clown would assassinate Francisco Rafael Arejano Felix, the leader of the notorious Tijuana cartel and one of Mexico's most dangerous men at the time, in front of everyone present at his 63rd birthday party. Today, Yo, bro, in front of everybody at his 63rd birthday party. Yo, bro, they are not playing. Yo, they are not playing out there, yo. And I know it's a beautiful country. I ain't taking nothing away from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, although I do these videos, I don't want nobody to get, well, all the people who think and is looking at these videos like, I ain't never going to Mexico. It's beautiful places out there. I'm sure of it. But, yo, it's crazy, too, on the outskirts. We know the clown assassin was Jose Rodrigo Arashiga Gomboa, Sinaloa cartel's highest ranking hitman, better known as El Chino Antrax. And today, I'll be telling you his story. Shady beginnings. Jose Rodrigo Arashiga Gamboa had a surprisingly normal and privileged upbringing. He was born on the 15th of June in the city of Culiacan, the very heart of the state of Sinaloa, Mexico. His family were well respected and somewhat affluent. His father was a government official and his mother was an academic. However, there was a problem right from the very beginning, and it had everything to do with Arashiga's neighbors. You see, the family that lived next door to Arashiga through his childhood were the Zambadas. And if you aren't familiar with that name, I'll break it down for you in a few seconds. Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia was part of the four people who founded the Sinaloa cartel 35 years ago in 1987. When El Chapo was still active, Zambada led his own faction. The only reason you don't hear much about him was because, unlike El Chapo, who enjoyed courting the spotlight, Zambada had always been content with being the equally ruthless, equally cunning, shadowy figure. Now, back to Arachiga's story. Nah, but that's the most dangerous people. The ones that's always in the spotlight, the ones that's out and outside in the outskirts that's hiding, motherfuckers be dangerous. I'm like, for real. I think El Mayo is El Chapo's brother, right? 
And I don't think they, they said, I think the last video they said that he hot. Oh yeah, he's hotter in the mountains. Bro, they are not. So picture how, picture how armed he is. Like, it's going to have to take, you know how they went to go find Osama Bin Laden? That's what they're going to need to do to find this nigga El Mayo. He is guarded. His nephew just got locked up. You think you're going to get him? You're going to have to go through a, a fucking battle. El Mayo Zambada had three sons, Vincente Zambada Niebla, Ismael Zambada Imperial, and Serafin Zambada Ortiz. Those three sons were around the same age with Arashiga, and being his neighbors, he grew up with them. Many years... So the top earners oh, in this country are no longer together. doctors, lawyers... So I guess they all grew up together. Them niggas straight gangsters, yo. Courtroom, Arashiga's mom would say this about her son's relationship with the Zambadas. They went to school together. They played together. They participated in sports together. They attended social events together. They grew to be best friends. No one knows how much influence the Zambada boys had over Arashiga, but you must know that Zambada did not shield his sons from his cartel business. It was a family business. However, as Arashiga grew older, he didn't show any indication that he would live a life of crime. He tried to be a pilot in the Mexican military, but failed the physical exam because because he had a skin condition called psoriasis. So, Arashiga shifted his focus to other things. More specifically, he decided to pursue a degree in architecture in college. During his time in college, two life-changing events happened to him in rather quick succession. One, he had a daughter, and two, he got married. These new responsibilities forced him to drop out of school. And this is when things take a dramatic turn for the worse. A new chapter. It's life. always when you're trying to change your life that you get thrown roadblocks. I'm not saying that getting married and, and having kids is roadblocks. It's always when you're trying to change your life. As a father, husband, and provider proved to be incredibly difficult for Arashiga. And when it became unbearable, he turned to his childhood friends, the Zambada brothers, for help. One of the brothers, Vincente Zambada, also known as El Vicentilo, chose to help Arashiga the only way he could, by introducing him to cartel business. Arashiga was first tasked with small and harmless errands, like driving shipments and supervising goods to their destinations. And when he did these tasks perfectly, El Vicentilo introduced him to the drug trade. It was during this time that Arashiga's creativity entered the spotlight. He came up with an ingenious method of getting shipments of cocaine and marijuana across the border without getting caught. His plan involved creating a network of legitimate businesses that required shipments to America from Mexico. Then oh, he, was he would set smart. up several legitimate trucking companies that delivered those shipments. This way, he could legally get the trucks across because they had the proper paperwork, and the border patrol would have no idea that tons and tons of drugs were hidden in each truck. In no time, Arachiga became a big-time player within the Sinaloa cartel and caught the attention of El Vicentilo's father, the senior Zambada, El Mayo, who began to take a liking to him. Somewhere, sometime around this point, something snapped within Arashiga, or maybe it had always been there, because this was when he began to exhibit an unquenchable thirst for blood. He voluntarily engaged in the more grisly parts of the cartel trade. More than anyone else in the cartel at that point, Arachiga was willing to murder people. However, it was the things he did with the bodies of the people that he killed that turned him into a notoriously feared urban legend. Mutilated bodies like cautionary banners and grisly ribbons were hung up on public bridges within Sinaloan territory. And the rumor in town was that anyone who died at the hands of Arachiga continued their suffering in the afterlife because of what was done to their body. Unsurprisingly, El Mayo capitalized on Arachiga's- Nah, bro. This nigga was bugged the fuck out. Let me play that back. I guess I don't think y'all seen that. Bro, he was people. bugged out. However, it was the things he did with the bodies of the people that he killed that turned him into a notoriously feared urban legend. Bro, he got a like mutilated for bodies like cautionary and mutilated banners the bodies. and grisly ribbons were hung up on public bridges within Sinaloan territory. And the rumor in town was that anyone who died at the hands of Arachiga continued their suffering in the afterlife because of what was done to their body. Unsurprisingly, El Mayo capitalized on Arachiga's flair for violence and added him to his retinue of feared assassins. And more importantly, he was made the personal bodyguard of El Vicentillo, Los Antrax. Sometime around 2008, Arachiga was removed from bodyguard duties and given a new, arguably more important assignment by El Mayo. There was a civil war brewing within the Sinaloa cartel. An ally of the Sinaloa cartel had broken off and was waging war. They were the Beltran Leva organization, and while their fight was with El Chapo, El Mayo was caught in the middle of it and had to join the war. The situation was the perfect storm for Arachiga. He formed his own armed squadron of the Sinaloa cartel 
Hotel and named it Los Anthrax, after the infamous deadly bacteria. Members of his team included his right-hand man, René Velázquez Valenzuela, aka El Sargento Phoenix. Jesus Peña, also known as El 20, Rafael Guadalupe Felix Núñez, also known as Changuito Anthrax, amongst others, and every member was given a ring. As the head of this hit squad, Arachiga would come to be known as El Chino Anthrax, which translated to the Chinese Anthrax. They had two jobs. One was the protection of El Mayo Zambada, and the second was a war on anyone who dared to cross their paths. For Arachiga and his hit squad, that was practically anybody. Los Anthrax wreaked havoc on Sinaloa over a five-year period of unending violence, and Arachiga turned into an unrecognizable monster. Every time they clashed with a Beltran Leva, it was a bloodbath, with casualties on both sides, including civilians. Meanwhile, the Mexican army joined the party and tried to take both factions down. After a while, rival cartel members got fed up, and they began taking out members of the Los Anthrax. Even the Mexican military joined the party. Meanwhile, Arachiga began to take an unhealthy liking to the spotlight. As Arachiga's gang suffered hit after hit, his leadership began to look shaky in the eyes of Almayo. On the 1st of November 2011, Los Anthrax suffered one of its biggest blows when a fellow leader of the squad, Francisco Archirubio, whom everyone knew as Pancho, was killed during an indoor soccer game in Culiacan by rival gangsters of Los Mazatlecos. The enforcer of- Ah, that's crazy, bro. Like, that's- Bro, it's fucking war. Yo. Arm of the Beltran Leva organization. The reprisal violence that followed shook different cities in Sinaloa for months to come. Bodies hung from the bridges, civilians shot dead on playgrounds. There was violence everywhere. Meanwhile, as Arechiga took out revenge on his enemies, he also picked up another questionable hobby social media influencer. As crazy as it sounds, this nigga went on Instagram with it. <laughs> it's not funny. Bro, they did not give a fuck anymore. Like, they got to live regular lives, I understand, but it's like, they just said, fuck it. And just went on Instagram and just tweeting and shit. That's shit that they people be doing nowadays, be snitching on themselves. I'm not saying he did that. But like, damn, bro, after like you losing all these people, and like sometimes you probably want to just live a regular life and frankly, it shouldn't. Arashiga flaunted his wealth on social media and effectively became a social media influencer. He made millions of dollars from the cartel and, unsurprisingly, spent those millions on flashy cars, rented out expensive yachts, bought expensive watches and houses. Arechiga also had several narco corridor ballads written about him, some of which described him as an elegant and fit man who enjoyed his sports cars, yachts, and drinking champagne. And he posted everything on social media, flaunting his wealth for the world to see. He even posed with famous celebrities like this one, with Paris Hilton. And while he might have blurred out his face to hide his identity, security Paris agencies Hilton, all over the world began to pick up on his tail. And it didn't take them long to figure out a way to catch him. You see, while Arechiga might have made efforts to hide his identity, his signature Los Anthrax ring was on his finger. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. That's probably a lot of people down for. Going on social media and posting what you got. Sometimes flaunting. And especially if you live in an illegal lifestyle, that shit ain't it, bro. Like, you're bound to go down. Don't think nobody's watching. The police is watching. Niggas probably watching right now. I'm not going to say I'm doing anything illegal, but I'm just saying, like, you never know who's watching on social media in every picture you he post. never took it off and this slip up would ultimately lead to his downfall in the final months of 2013 arrest jail snitch on the 31st oh. of december just months after assassinating the head of the tijuana cartel arashiga decided to take a vacation he left mexico for the netherlands and immediately upon landing he was arrested by members of the dutch police some days before then the u.s had alerted the dutch that a 33 year old mexican citizen who also happened to be a drug lord would be arriving in their country in a few days and they wanted him to be arrested so, immediately after Arashiga landed, they identified him and took him in. However, the identification process wasn't easy because Arashiga was flying under a false identity, the identity of a dead man, probably one that he killed. He had also grown a beard and slightly altered his face with plastic surgery. What helped the authorities to identify him was his Los Anthrax ring, which he had foolishly kept on his finger. Extradition and trial in the US 
On the 10th of July, 2014, Arachiga was extradited to the US. The next day, he was arraigned and formally charged for drug charges. At first, Arachiga was stubborn and pleaded not guilty to the drug charges against him. But after several hearings, Arachiga did a 360. On the 20th of March, 2015, he pled guilty and admitted that he had been involved in cocaine and marijuana shipment into the US and had facilitated violent activities while working for the cinema. Uh, that's, that's not real. That's not real nigga shit, bro. I ain't taking nothing away from the actual Mexi uh, Mexican, Mexico's cartel people. I'm not saying they all like this, but if you get caught, you get caught. You got caught up being stupid. Oh, uh, come on. He went out. He did bad. Cartel. This change of heart was suspicious. And there were a lot of questions at the I'd time. Be smarter was than he that. tortured? Why was he suddenly confessing? What offer could the prosecutors have given him that he couldn't refuse? At the end of his trial, that offer became quite clear when he was given an incredibly light sentence of just six years in a U.S. prison and an extra five years of probation. During the six years, El Chino Anthrax snitched on almost everyone, collaborating with the U.S. Attorney's Office, giving names, addresses, and exposing forms of operation of the Sinaloa cartel in the US. The intel that he shared was so useful that it went a long way in destabilizing major parts of the Sinaloa cartel. Meanwhile, everyone at home, including El Mayo, were fully aware that their golden boy had turned into a rat. The ultimate end. On the 3rd of March 2020, Arechiga was released on parole and placed under house arrest in the US for obvious reasons. The terms of his parole limited him to a radius of 500 meters from his house in California. However, a few months after, in May, he escaped his parole and returned to Culiacan to live with his sister and her husband. Unsurprisingly, 10 days later, uh, on the night of May... He's dumb, bro. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. How they giving it up out there? You snitch on everybody and go back home? Knowing that how easy it is, what's going on? 14th, 2020, Arachiga, his sister, and her husband were in the house when all of a sudden, masked gunmen invaded the property and began shooting at them. Arachiga responded with gunfire, but he eventually ran out of ammo and they were all taken hostage. The following morning, the body of Arachiga, along with his sister and her husband, were discovered in a black SUV, wrapped in cloth with their heads covered in plastic bags. They had all been tortured and shot dead. There was a lot of speculation about who could have ordered this attack on El Chino. Some say it was probably members of the Tijuana cartel taking revenge on him for his assassination of their boss. Others point fingers at remnant members of the Beltran Leva, an organization that had already been disbanded by the Mexican military. However, and whoever it was, the attack happened deep in Sinaloa territory, and there is no way anyone could have launched such an attack without El Mayo or the senior members of the cartel knowing. And in the months after the attack, when there were no reprisals, reaction, or revenge for the assassination of one of their former top sicarios, it became clear. El Mayo must have been the one who ordered the killing, and if he didn't, he definitely allowed it. To them, El Chino Anthrax was a traitor who had sold them out, and in any world, business or crime, that is unforgivable. So, why did Arachiga leave the safety of his probation in the US to return to Sinaloa, yeah, where he should have known he wasn't wanted? Did he really think everything he had done would be so easily forgiven? Who assured his safety upon his return, or was... I'm not going to front... He was a fucking bozo. He goes down on the bozo list. That nigga went to the... He got locked up, went to the U.S., told on everybody, went back home. If I was his sister, I'd have been like, yo, get the fuck out of here. You know what's coming for you. And they beat the living life out of him and killed all three of them. I don't, if you knew what you was doing and who you up against, why the fuck you go back there? He should have just stood in the motherfucking U.S. and became a construction worker or some shit. I guess that's the end of the video of El Chino, the, the biggest rat. Because, well, I don't respect what he did. That wasn't, that, like, should you should have just went out like a soldier and said, fuck it. I don't know why the fuck you go back home. But subscribe down below. Tell me what you tell me what you think. Hit the comment, subscribe button, like. It's your boy, and I'm out. Man. El Chino is a fucking idiot.